Hello everyone, welcome back to more of what might just be the greatest game ever made. Okay, um, so I did want to just quickly show this because um, it's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, so you remember last time we were in the situation and Paul asked us um, what weapon do we want. He gave us the choice of three additional weapons. Um, we could choose the rifle, which is the choice that I ultimately ended up making. We could choose the crossbow, which uh, we already got in the, at the end of the previous video anyway. And we could have gotten the gep gun. So let's go ahead and just to show off what it's like, let's go ahead and see what happens if we choose the gep gun. So... Never know when I might come up against some heavy armor. Give me the Gep gun. The Gep gun might be useful. They have a security bot on patrol near the statue entrance. Great. What's the first move? I'm going to give you a... Okay. Oh, hold on. I think I just heard... Uh... Yeah, I just heard the sounds of gunfire. I think they did it again. NSF everywhere, JC. Your orders are to shoot yeah. on... Yeah. Whoops. Whoa. Oh, dear. get you inside the statue. Look for a bum. Identify yourself with the phrase iron and copper. Wow, that uh, these two guys came out here and got killed by that robot again. Okay, anyway, so the Gep gun is down there. It's number four. Okay, so here we go. So this is the Gep gun. So we start off with just four shots. I mean, really, just, just four shots. That's it. And... You could say, well, you know, I mean, uh, you don't need it very often. Yeah, it's true, you don't need this gun very often, but then what's the point? There is, as uh, as Alex Jacobson mentioned, there is a robot, a patrol robot farther on if in that direction. Approach, yeah, 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 I know. Academy stealth course. Stay out of their field of view, walk slowly to stay quiet, and crouch behind cover. Or if you have to get your hands dirty, remember that a headshot is a lethal takedown. Shut up, Alex. I already know. Thanks. Um... I also can't run while I'm carrying this thing. I'm trying to run, but I, it actually won't let me because this thing is so heavy. I guess I could just put it away. I could just put it away. And funnily enough, you can run as long as you're not carrying it in your hands. But if you have it on your back or something, that's fine. Actually, does this thing have a... I was wondering if it has a zoom, like a scope, but apparently it does not. Anyway, um, so let's do this. Let's just go ahead and show what happens when you try to... Uh, oh boy, you can lock on from pretty far away. Well, that, that was the end of that fellow. He did not, uh... Oh, there's another one. So, one obvious disadvantage to doing this is there's not much to search afterwards. Sometimes, you know, after you kill somebody, you can search their body. I mean, you've seen, I, you know, you can search them for ammunition and things like that. Some people are carrying keys that you can pick up from their corpses after you kill them or knock them out. But, um, uh, when you do this, there's not really very much left to search, is there? Um, where did the other guy go? It is, I think his bloody remains just disappeared. I guess the game makes these things, you know, disappear after a while so they don't end up bogging down the game performance. But, uh, yeah, so there you go. So that's the Gep Gun. Um, it is pretty cool. You can also use it to, it, it appears, oh, yeah, see over there? There's that robot there. Yeah, see, it's it's locking onto that robot. You can also use it to lock onto, is this locking onto that tree? I have no idea what that locked on to. I don't think I destroyed anything with that shot. That was kind of a waste. But, uh, yeah, back there is that robot. There it is right there. Be careful. The NSF has set up patchwork security systems here. Come on, do I... Is this actually a good place? Oh, I, I guess it is, since... Uh... Yeah, there we go. So you, we could destroy that robot with this Gep gun. It could actually be pretty useful for that. But I opted to get the rifle, so we'll need to do something else. And that's it. I'm already out of shots. And this thing is huge. Like, it takes up... Let's take a look at our inventory here. Can I take a look at our inventory, please? Um, why is the game not... Uh... Okay, now it's working. Yeah, see, it, it takes up eight slots in our inventory. So I just don't really know that it's worth it taking up uh, eight slots of a fairly limited inventory just for something that you can only shoot four times and then it's done. And, of course, you can get more rockets for it later. There, There is the opportunity later in the game to get more rockets for this thing, but still, it's, it's, it's such a limited use item that I just didn't really feel like it was worth it. So anyway, that's the Gep Gun. So let's go ahead and... Um 
load our last game. Yeah, the last game is where we had just gotten the crossbow. So let's go ahead and load that and continue on our merry ways. So I think I've already cleared out most of this area around uh, around here. Uh, so we can walk around here pretty freely. Let's see, did I already search this guy's corpse? Oh, I guess I did. You have to be careful because that robot over there might detect us. It's not that dangerous, but still. That's a pepper gun. That's something I'll probably never use. And this is a prod charger, which is also something I'll probably never use, but I might as well grab it since it's there. Oh, and here's a data cube. Brother, I've set up the turrets and cameras in the statue ruins. A hasty defense, but since we won't be here long, it should work. The security computer login is NSF001. The password is smash the state. This is a common, uh, actually a constant thing that happens in this game. You just find passwords and logins and things like that written down, stored somewhere. We will be collecting a lot of those in this game. Did I search this guy's corpse? Okay, I guess I didn't, he didn't have anything. Oh, and here's, um, here's Unaco headquarters. Uh, we can't go in until we've resolved the situation out here, but we can talk to this guy at least. Oh, there's a helicopter taking off. Freight base is under lockdown until the danger's gone, Agent Denton. Right. How you guys holding up? UNETCO command made us pull back. I guess for Gunther's sake. What's the deal? We're ready to go in. Um... I wonder if this has consequences. I wonder if the things that you say here will actually change the course of the game. I don't think so. The game gives you a lot of choices, but... This, the sad truth is that a lot of those choices don't really make a lot of difference in the end. Um, so, I mean, you can say, yeah, I'm going to clean the place out, or let's let's at least pretend to be ta I mean, the truth is that I'm killing everyone you've seen. I'm basically killing everyone I come across. But let's, let's go ahead and at least say that we're using a minimum force approach because we are police after all. We're taking a minimum force approach. We're cops after all. Ask me. I think we should frag them all. You trespass on UNETCO property. You get pumped full of lead. When due process fails us, we really do live in a world of terror. Thought you nanowogs were supposed to be badass killing machines. Guess I was wrong. Guess so. <laughs> some advice. You get out there, you're gonna have to tangle with some real sons of bitches. Best thing is to pick them off from 50 or 100 paces with a scope. I scored an extra one from a couple of thugs we dropped down by the dock. You can have it for 700 credits. I also picked up some 10 millimeter ammo and some crossbow darts. Say 200 for one and 60 for the other. Shouldn't you turn that stuff over to the quartermaster? Sure, I will. As long as command has the rest of us on parade drill, someone might as well put this hardware to use. So, as you can see, I don't have 700 for the scope. The scope is actually useful. I mean, obviously having a sniper scope on a weapon is a useful thing to have. I already have one, obviously, for our sniper rifle, but if I got this scope, I could put it on the pistol and have a sniper, you know, like a pistol with a sniper scope on it. That is pretty useful, but I don't have 700 for that scope. Uh, and I think we already have enough 10 millimeter ammo and tranquilizer darts, I think. I mean, we'll probably, I think we have enough tranquilizer darts, so I'll, I'll just go ahead and pass on this stuff. I'll check back with you later. Here you can already start to see um, some of the greatness of the game servicing. Just, you know, the, these little moral dilemmas, like this guy saying, um, I mean, he's kind of right. I mean, if you trespass on federal government property, you can probably expect to uh, face a, uh, a, a violent response. I don't think people are just going to be gentle with you and say, oh, you know, let's, let's talk it out. Let's, uh, let's sit together and have a discussion about this. They, I mean, they, they may very well just shoot on sight. So, you know, he, he's kind of right. Um, and J.C. Denton's trying to be, uh, trying to be all, you know, the, the moralist and say, oh, when, when due process fails us, we really do live in a world of terror, which is a great quote, actually. It's one of many wonderful quotes that, uh, that are very, uh, very, very well done in this game. Let's see, does this guy have anything to say? Welcome aboard, Agent. Thank you, sir. Um, there is actually a little, um, what do you, what do you want to call it? Not, not a... Not a settlement, I get I guess a station here. Uh let's see, hold on. We we can open up this crate and take a look inside. Oh, another multi-tool, that's nice. I don't need another crowbar. Um this thing here is locked. And is there anything in Oh here we go. Back here there's another There we go, there's a lockpick, that's nice. 
Sometimes the game rewards you just by doing little things like this, like just by looking in corners. Sometimes you'll find stuff like this hidden away in a corner. And speaking of finding things hidden away in corners, look what we have here. This is the compound hatch key. Now, why it was just sitting there in the corner, I couldn't tell you. Why did somebody put it there? I mean, I guess somebody hid it there and thought nobody would find it, but we did. Some of this stuff sometimes gets a little bit ridiculous. I mean, I have to admit, sometimes the game just gets pretty ridiculous in how it uh, just kind of puts things in convenient places. And you're just expected to think, whoa, that was convenient that just, that just happened to be sitting there. I mean, in a, in a federal anti-terrorist organization, I don't think people are just going to be hiding keys to, uh, to compounds in cracks like that beside buildings, but um, hey, it's, you know, it's probably uh, the key to this, right? Yes, it is. Okay, so let's open that up and see what we have down here. Uh, see, we got 50 skill points, uh, exploration bonus. That's nice. I, I like that very much. What do we have here? We have an EMP grenade. Wonderful. That will be very useful against that robot. So rather than blowing up that robot with a GEP gun, which we could have done, we will disable it with an EMP grenade, probably, unless we find a better way to get around it. So, cool. Cool, man, cool. That is good stuff all around. Um, and this here... Hmm, this is a four-digit code. We could get around it with a multi-tool, or we could everything was clear an hour ago then boom yeah um let's go ahead and save here and just see if, if it's worth going in there because potentially let's see um uh what do you call this the side trailer. It's not really a trailer, but whatever. So first, let's go ahead and just get through this with a multi-tool and see what's inside. All right. Actually, we should probably be careful doing stuff like this because even though we work for Unatco, this door is presumably locked for a reason. These guys may actually get upset with us if they see us doing things like that. So... Be careful about stuff like that. Uh, let's see. See, we have 25 skill points for coming in here. So if nothing else, I might want to come in here just to get the 25 skill points. But the question is, is there a better way of getting in here uh, rather than using up a multi-tool? So here we get more tranquilizer darts. What's down here? Another data cube. Oh, uh, camera system login, uh, satcom, new password, zenatco, underscore, zero, zero, one. P.S. We will beat you at darts on Saturday, suckas. Okay, nice. Here's another lamp that we can... T That's interesting. When I turned on the lamp, the lamp itself lit up, and when I turned it back off, then it actually made the whole room darker. I think that might have been a bug. So here's a computer. Um, so if we use a computer like this, we can do a couple of things. We can hit the hack button up here, and since we are at the lowest hacking skill level, it takes a while to hack. The bar goes down to, like, almost halfway before we finish the hacking. And here we go. And we can do things like control cameras and things like that. But let me go ahead and log out. I mean, we have to log in for this computer. It was... It was this here. Yeah, so it's satcom unatco underscore zero zero one. So let's go ahead and put that in. So satcom and unatco underscore zero zero one. Unlike most real-world computers, this does not just show a line of asterisks as you put in the password. It actually shows you the password that you type in. So let's hit login. There we go. So when you're logged into a security system like this, you can turn cameras on and off. You will almost always want to turn the cameras off because you really have no reason. I mean, you have no benefit to... The cameras uh, will sound an alarm if they spot you. So basically, it's in your own interest, in the interest of stealth to turn off the camera. So we can turn off that camera, turn off this one, and turn off this one. Here it actually doesn't really matter very much because we work for UNATCO. The cameras will not identify us as an enemy, but uh, in enemy compounds this is a very good thing to do to turn off the cameras because it means that you, um, you will not uh, get shot at by the security systems. And here I can also change the door. Well, the door is already open and unlocked, but I can change it. I can change it to locked if I want. And I can also open and close the door from here. There's no turrets here, but if you have, if there are weapon turrets here hooked up to some of these cameras, you can also set the turrets to attack your enemies, which is kind of cool. 
Anyway, um, so yeah, so... You saw, I mean, you saw the timer counting down here in the upper right when I was hacked into the system. Um, you can't really stay logged in very long, like I said, especially at the lowest hacking skill level. You can't stay logged in more than a few seconds, but that's enough. I mean, if you just want to turn off the cameras, all you have to do is click on this camera, bam, turn it off, click on this camera, turn it off, click on this camera, turn it off, log out, done. So that actually suffices in most cases. Um, what I'd like to know now is, is there a way of getting the code? Um, I'm going to guess that somewhere we can probably find the code sitting around. But I don't know where. Is it maybe somewhere like around here? Let me turn on our augmented vision for a second. No, there's nothing, doesn't appear to be anything sitting around here. I'm pretty sure that somewhere in the game you can just find the code to that door. But, um... I really don't know where now. I probably found it before, but I don't remember where. Um, so... Let's, let's be a little bit ridiculous. And... My orders are to hang back. Well, you're doing a good job of it, sir. Uh, let's go ahead... Hold on, is there something maybe back here? Oh, I can't jump back there, apparently. Okay, but I don't think there's anything... Can I close this? Yes, I can. I don't have anything back here. All right, let, like I said, let's be silly and assume that maybe it's one, two, three, four, something like that. Oh, I can't because it's... Hold on. Let me go ahead and load my game. Let me just go ahead and load the previous game, because there are places that in this game that use codes like 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's try this. It's not that. 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. Uh, they put a real code on it. Okay, let me do this then. Let me go ahead and... Um, I will actually cheat a little bit by looking it up. I have a text file that lists all the uh, all the codes in the entire game um, it's it's a little bit of a cheat but it's not really because it well I guess it's I guess it's kind of a cheat because you're not meant to just look it up in a list but basically all the codes or almost all the codes in the game can be found somewhere so it's not like uh, somebody just guessed all 10,000 possible codes somebody found the code somewhere in the game and just documented it so according to the list I have here this code is 0451 so let's go ahead and um, can I please get back into the game all right so let me um, the game game froze on me again. I don't know why the game does this. This is really, this is really very annoying. I don't think I have this problem with the other renderers. I think this is something to do with the uh, DirectX 10 render that I have. Oh, wait. Is my... Oh. Oh. I thought it was, uh... Uh... Am I having problems with my keyboard here? Oh, I think I was having problems with my keyboard because I alt-tabbed out of the, the game window. Okay, let's load and try again. So... What did I say it was? 0451, I think. There we go, 0451. 0451. So like I said, I'm sure the code can be found somewhere in the game. I just don't know, don't remember where now, so that's fine. So let's go ahead and get the code from here. And we actually don't really need to hack into this computer right now because, I mean, what's the point? The, you know, we're, we're not an enemy, so this, this camera is not detecting us as an enemy. It's not going to start shooting at us, so I think we're... Uh, think Welcome we're... aboard, Agent. All right, um, I think we're done here for now. We could, uh, normally we could walk into UNAT, go through those doors. They're, they're, again, they're closed while the base is on lockdown. So I'll just go ahead and uh, save again. Leaving UNATCO compound. Yeah, um... I asked myself the question uh, after making the last video, why do I always kill everyone? Because you saw, I, I basically, I killed all the enemies that I ran up against, even though our brother Paul told us not to. And really, one of the reasons why is because this prod has limited ammunition, it has limited charges, so I don't think I could just go around zapping everyone because I'd run out of uh, charge for this, uh, for this uh, stun prod. But 
even if that were the case, we have this baton here. So basically, we have two melee weapons. Well, we have the knife as well, but actually, you know what? Let me just drop that knife now because I never use it. Um, we have the crowbar and we have the baton. Now, oh, the baton actually does more damage. The baton does seven damage and the crowbar only does six. So actually, and the thing is, the baton does not, um, it doesn't kill people. If you whack people with a baton, it just knocks them unconscious. So you can still do everything that you would do. Uh, if they're unconscious, you can still search their bodies and take their weapons and keys and things away from them. You can still pick up their bodies and throw the bodies somewhere else if you want to. So you can pretty much do all the same stuff that you would do if you kill them. It just means that instead of killing them, you, you know, leave them alive. You leave their unconscious body somewhere. Um, I, I really can't explain why. It's, it's just kind of a... It's just kind of a thing, you know? I mean, it's just... The NSF put a commercial-grade security bot in this area. You can either avoid its patrol route or, if you're feeling lucky, try and take it out with the EMP grenades or explosives. I wouldn't recommend taking it on with small arms. Yeah, that is true. Let me just go ahead and, just to show you what it looks like, let me go ahead and equip the baton. So this is the baton. Yeah. And if you, uh, if you whack somebody in the head with it a few times, like this guy, for example. Actually, that did not work very well. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm, I thought that, uh... I thought that I would get pretty much the same results with the baton, except that instead of dying, he would just fall unconscious. But apparently the, the crowbar actually seems to drop them faster. Okay, so that's a good reason to use the crowbar after all. The NSF put a commercial-grade security bot in this area. You can either avoid its patrol route or, if you're feeling lucky, try and take it out with the EMP grenades or explosives. I wouldn't recommend taking it on with small arms. You know what, I'm going to save my game here just because I'm tired of hearing Alex say that same thing. Um, so, oh, this is bad, because the guy's facing me. That's him. Yeah. I, I was hoping that I might catch him while he was, while his back was turned, but clearly I did not. So, what do we want to do? Um, I guess I can just sit here and wait until that guy turns around, assuming he doesn't spot me. You can see, they, they have to be fairly close to spot you. I mean, he really, in real life, the guy would very obviously spot me from here. But in this game, you know, the game's a little... An intruder. Okay, now he spotted me. But, I mean, the game's fairly forgiving. I mean, you can be in fairly plain sight and, and it'll take a while before they spot you. And even then, uh, they'll always stop and say something like, Oh, I thought I saw something. And then they'll... Okay. Oh, dear. Is... Oh! Ah! oh! Stupid robot. Stupid freaking robot messed up what would have been a good takedown. Okay, let's let's go ahead and get this robot. So I'll equip this EMP grenade. There's some text here which you don't really need to read. Um, yeah. So EMP grenades don't really hurt us. It just causes us to lose our bioelectric energy. Um, but it destroys robots. Um fairly effectively, so let's go ahead and do this. Oh, I don't know if that's close enough, actually. Oh, it is, yeah. You can see the robot is disabled, so it didn't get blown up, it just started smoking. Okay, now it stopped smoking, but this this text appears over it when you mouse over it saying disabled. So that robot is out of commission. Nice. That is a good thing. I'll go ahead and save again. Disabled robot. See, we didn't need that Gep Gun after all. And we'll have an opportunity to get another Gep Gun later in the game if we really want one, but I probably will not get one because I really don't need I think one. We've got an intruder. Thank you, man. Oh, there's another guy over there. Oh boy, that's annoying. Um, okay, let's try again. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Yeah, so I was going to go on this whole file, philosophical diatribe about why not just leave these guys alive. I mean, Deus Ex is a game very much um, about not having consequences for what you do. Yes. Oh. Ah. All 
All right, got some 10 milliliter ammo. Oh, what's in here? Is there anything in here? Oh, there's a uh, thingy here that's locked. Oh, and we have some flares. I'll go ahead and take the flares for now, but I actually, I never used flares, to be honest. I, I don't think I've ever used them in this game. They can be handy for lighting up areas, but I mean, you know, you just use your augmented vision and it works just fine. You know, I've actually never seen this area. I don't think I've ever come out here, so I didn't realize that. Let me go ahead and quickly save here and just um, take a look. So we can pick this lock with four picks. Tell you what, just so we don't have to wait as long, let's go ahead and upgrade our lock picking skill just for a second. Yeah, okay, can't upgrade it further than that, but let's see. So now it takes just two picks. So here we go. I just want to see what's in here, and if it's worth it, then maybe I'll try to... Let's see. Ooh, 30-06 sniper ammo. That is definitely a neat thing, because we only have six sniper shots. Hmm. Is it worth trying to somehow... Hmm, I don't really have... A... I was going to say, is it is it, gonna... is it worth trying to maybe somehow blast through this thing? But I don't... I don't have any explosives with me, so I can't blast through it. So th my options are, if I want to get inside, I can either use four lockpicks or expend the skill points to get my lockpicking up to the next level and then use just two lockpicks. But I only I only had two lockpicks. I'm actually out of lockpicks now. I don't think it's worth, as much as I like the sniper rifle, I don't think it's worth using up my only two lockpicks that I have right now just to get more ammo for it and some money. This is a credit shit, so it's 100 credits. Okay. Yeah, you know what? I don't think it's worth that. Yeah, you can come up with philosophical theories as to why you might prefer to kill characters in a video game, even though they're just, you know, fictional characters on the screen. But I will go ahead and refrain from doing so. Um, instead I will save my game here. Another casualty of philosophy. And let's move on. Is there anything over here? I don't think so. Anything over here? Oh, wow. I know it. <laughs> Some more 10, 10 millimeter ammo. We must have a lot of 10 mil ammo now. We have four clips. Wow. It's probably more more of that 10 mil ammo than I'll use in the entire game. One other thing that occurred to me when I thought about it. Um, well, it, it was this one. Oh, that guy is facing away from me. This is a very good time. That was good timing. So this guy is not NSF because he's not wearing an NSF uniform. This is just a mercenary thug. But he had a crossbow with tranquilizer darts. And uh, if he had shot me, I would have taken quite a bit of damage from the poison. So good thing we got him when we did. Is there anything over here? No, it doesn't look like it. All right. So... One thing that did kind of, uh, that some people do kind of comment on when they're criticizing this game is, um, God, mercenary thug. J.C. Denton is supposed to be a highly trained counterterrorism officer. If that's the case, then why does it claim that he's untrained in almost every type of weapons training? Uh, the only thing that you start off trained in is use of the pistol. But, I mean, we actually, we went through tr rifle training with Gunther Hermann. Presumably, J.C. Denton has received training in, you know, in demolition weapons, in medicine, and, you know, at least field medicine and things like that. So it's a little bit absurd that you start the game untrained. What's also absurd is that the game makes such a big deal about nano-augmentation and talking about... I mean, this whole thing, the whole reason why we're on this first mission is because the uh, the agency basically wants to see how we, as a nano-augmented agent, perform in contrast to, um, you know, to old-fashioned mech technology. But the thing is, we have no augmentations. 
J.C. Denton has no augmentations other than just the, the vision thing, which lights up uh, the darkness, but that's it. He has no combat mods, so he's basically just like a regular person going in and killing the whole island full of people with a crowbar. So that, that doesn't really... There, there's another guy over there. Let's see. Hold on. Is he facing... Oh, th oh, that guy has a sniper rifle. I could have gotten the Gep gun and gotten a sniper rifle from this guy instead. Maybe I should have, because I haven't used the sniper rifle yet, so I actually could have used the Gep gun on the robot, gotten the sniper rifle from this guy, and still had the Gep gun, still three more rockets in the Gep gun for later use. Maybe that would have been the better option, but yeah, you know what, I wouldn't have used the Gep gun anyway. It might have, it's, it's a nice thought, but I don't think I would have done it. But yeah, I mean, it, it, obviously J.C. Denton should be a trained agent, and he should have some augmentations since his being augmented is such a big deal. But uh, you start off with nothing. You start off this game with no augmentations, no training, and I realize it's part of the RPG element. We're in darkness here, so the guy doesn't see us. He'll probably hear us in a second. Wait, quiet. All right. Ooh, nice! We got some tech goggles and some 30-06 ammo from this fellow. Well, that was uh, that was a nice find. Let's go ahead and save here. Got more sniper ammo. How much sniper ammo do I have now? Okay, one additional clip, I guess. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, oh, that robot. Oh, that's a friendly robot there because it has a it turns green. The cursor turns green when I mouse over. So that's actually a friendly robot. I probably could have lured the guy over here and had the robot kill him, and, uh, but that would have worked as well, but who cares. So, um, I keep getting, getting distracted. Oh yeah, here, this place. Um, we can actually... Oh, 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 there's a guy there. Let's wait until he turns around. Is there anyone there? No. All right, let's go ahead and... Quiet. Oh, that guy also had tranquilizer darts. Let's go ahead and... I don't think anyone's going to see him, but just in case, let's toss him over there. All right. I keep getting distracted by the game. Um, got yet more darts. And also, these saved games get pretty big after a while. Like, you can see the, the, the file size of these games is 8 megs each, and later on they can go above 20 megs. So I'll probably start deleting old games pretty soon. I should probably actually delete some of these old save games already, but uh, I'll leave them for now, because you can see I have... I have a fair size hard drive. I still have 223 gigs for you on this drive, so I think I can afford to have a few 8 megabyte save files for a while. Um, but yeah, the... Uh, that's where the RPG element of this game comes in. I mean, I realize um, the game wouldn't necessarily be as much fun if you started off as completely augmented, able to kill anything with a glance. That would basically take most of the challenge out of the game. This is not a difficult game as it is. The game is pretty easy, which is one of the reasons why I like it, I guess. Um, so the game is pretty easy as it is. It would have been even easier if you started off with all these super powerful augmentations that allowed you to, to just kill everyone um, in mass just uh, with impunity. So, so that's where the character building comes in. You have to acquire the augmentations and skills and things like that. I know it makes sense from a gameplay perspective. It doesn't really make sense from a plot perspective because we're not some noob who just suddenly stepped onto a battlefield for the first time. We are a trained agent, and we should be able to, um... to, um... Uh-oh. That's him. He's a cop. Oh, I got too close. Got too close to him, and he, um... He, um... spotted me. That is a rat, by the way, in case you're wondering. You can kill rats in this game by either with weapons, or I think they die if you just step over them. Um, you can do that if you want. I'll well, what happened? Why did I suddenly accelerate in that? That's weird. For some reason, I suddenly accelerated in it. So, oh, I think this is not going to end well. I know I... Oh, okay. It ended well after all. I thought the guy was going to turn around, but he did not. So, here we have a hazmat suit. We could use it. I probably will not. I'm probably not going to bother because hazmat suits, again, only protect you from 25% of hazardous situations. So let's not even bother. What do we have up here? Let me turn on the light for a second. Oh, a multi-tool. And looks like that is all. Okay, well, that's enough. That's fine. Okay. 
so uh, I'm going to go ahead and since there are those three guys over there, I don't think they're going to come down here, but just in case, let me just take cover behind this, this structure here. And I'll save my game, and I guess that'll be enough for now. Uh, this is still... Um, This is still obviously just the beginning. This is really still just the very beginning of the game. Uh, like I said, this is a long game. This is going to go on. If it keeps going like this, this is going to go on forever. But, um, yeah, we're starting to see some signs of greatness already. We're starting to see some indications of why this is such a great game. Just random conversations. Like, I just love that. I just love the, the implications of that conversation between J.C. Denton and, and the soldier. Just where the soldier says, why didn't we just mow them down? And J.C. is just all, oh, and when due process fails us, then we really live in a world of terror. Uh, I mean, J.C. is really... He's the perfect combination of badass killing machine and impromptu philosopher. Like, he's really... He's just got such a discipline. Like, he really is... Uh, I mean, he... He really is... Um, I guess one of the reasons why people like this game is because J.C. is sort of like the cool hero that everyone, everyone wants to be. Everyone wants to be this cool hero like J.C. Denton, killing 50 people all at once with just a crowbar and then saying, oh, when our due process fails us, then we live in a world of terror. You know, quoting awesome lines like that while being all cool about it. That's just kind of the, the kind of cool and awesome hero that everyone really wants to be in their hearts and minds. So that's probably part of why this game appeals to people so much. But anyway... I will go ahead and stop the video for now. Thanks for watching, everyone. Next time we will have more exciting action here on Liberty Island as we attempt to liberate the island from the terrorists. I hope that you'll join me for more exciting Deus Ex action. Until then, thanks for watching, everyone. Ta-ta. Bye for now. I never asked for this.